Life insurance is not an investment. And if anybody ever comes to you and tells you, especially life insurance agents, that life insurance is an investment, you better run the opposite direction. I've had many even financial advisors come to me and comment on my posts when I'm posting about life insurance being an alternative to uh, protecting your money in a 401k and an IRA. It's an alternative in the way of that it protects your money from market loss, but it's not an investment. An investment holds risk. If you, if you look at all the different vehicles that we have, we have 401ks, we have IRAs, we have 529s, we have 457s, TSPs, pension funds, you know, stocks, bonds, CDs. There's tons of different vehicles out there where you can put your money. All that money is placed in a variable account. And by variable, I mean it goes up but it also, what also happens with variable? It also comes crashing down like we saw in 2008, 2018, 2020, 2022. The market is very volatile. Now, there are investment products that are okay to use, and it's okay to put your money inside of certain investment products as well. By the way, this is not financial advice. I have to make that disclaimer before we have some trolls in the comments saying, what accreditations do you have to be talking about investments? I'm not really talking about investments, but what I am talking about is life insurance. My name is Mark Cassara. I'm a licensed life insurance broker. I've been licensed for about four years now. I have a life producer license, and that one license allows me to sell, market, advertise, and put my clients into life insurance products as well as annuities. An annuity is not an investment. Again, if you hear from people and they say, eh, annuities are bad investment products, or life insurance is, is a bad investment product, you're absolutely, positively correct. And I actually agree with all the financial advisors that state that opinion. Because at the end of the day, guys, life insurance and annuities are made for one reason only, to protect your assets, okay? Life insurance has a couple different components to it. If you have a term policy, it's basically just death benefits. Some policies will also give you living benefits, which is also known as an accelerated death benefit rider. That says if you have a heart attack, cancer, or stroke while you're alive, you can go ahead and use that benefit while you're still alive to pay your medical bills, to fund your kid's college, to take care of all of your expenses. Now, what it doesn't have, a term product at least, what it doesn't have is cash value. It does not have a savings portion to the policy. Term is good for certain use cases. You want to protect uh, your family from any type of uh, you know, curveball that life will throw you while you have a mortgage, maybe a 30-year mortgage. So you want a 30-year term for life insurance. Once that mortgage is paid off, you have you have decreased the amount of debt that you owe. You don't necessarily need that amount of death benefits or, or that life insurance policy. So you can sometimes let that policy go or just let it run out. Okay, maybe you have other assets that you've invested in over the years that are going to take care and fund your retirement. Then we have something called permanent life insurance. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Permanent life insurance has been around for a long time, hundreds, uh, 100 years plus, okay? Matter of fact, life insurance in general has been around since the Roman Empire, okay? But that's a whole nother episode that we'll cover at another time. But life insurance, permanent life insurance has been around for a very, very long time long time, okay? Whole life insurance is the oldest form of life insurance uh, that became a permanent product way, way, way back in the late 1800s. So permanent life insurance, uh, when it was developed, it was meant for one reason, to continue to give you life insurance coverage and death benefits until you took your last breath, whether that was 65 years old, which early on, the life expectancy for a man and woman was late 60s. Now, because of modern medication and technology advances, 
we're living a lot longer. Now, who knows in another decade if we're going to end up living until 120, 150, 180, 200 years old. I'm not ruling that out, guys. If you read the Bible, people were living until eight, nine hundred years old. Now, that's a whole nother episode as well. But what I'm saying is we're starting to live longer. And so what permanent life insurance does is it gives you death benefits and living benefits. If you have the correct type of policy or if you have a broker or an agent that knows what they're doing, they're going to give you an accelerated death benefit rider, which takes care of you if you have any type of critical, chronic or terminal illness while you're alive. Okay, but what it also does is it gives you a savings portion. You're going to have a couple different components in a permanent policy. Number one, you have the death benefits and the living benefits. Okay, that's there in case you need it as a fall, as a fail safe, as a fallback. Okay, you have some type of critical, chronic, heart attack, cancer, stroke. You can use those death benefits while you're alive, or if you pass away, all of that money gets transferred to your heirs, to your beneficiary, absolutely tax free. Now, the second component to a permanent life insurance policy is something called cash value. Now, if you look at it like this, again, we're not looking at it like an investment account, but what we are looking at it as, it's kind of like a savings account on steroids, right? So this particular savings account will start to accumulate interest on the money that's placed with the life insurance company. Now, all of that money that's placed in the possession of the life insurance company, it, it falls under your name, a contract with your name on it. So it's your money. But what the life insurance carrier is doing is they're kind of protecting it for you. They're guarantee that you're never, ever going to lose that money. So it's in a secure, safe uh, reserve that the life insurance carrier owns. And what they do is they take a percentage of that money, maybe 20 to 40 percent, and they'll go ahead and allocate that into bonds. Now, we know if you have a 401k, you know that you can you can allocate your portfolio to a riskier asset class like stocks and, and mutual funds, but you can also reallocate it to a more safer and conservative portfolio. That would be the bond portfolio. Traditionally, bonds earn a steady rate of return, anywhere from 3 to 5%, sometimes in a higher inflationary environment like we're in right now. You're going to earn 7 8 9% in certain types of bonds. But overall, traditionally, bonds give you a steady, steady conservative rate of growth. So what the life insurance companies do do is they take a portion of the general fund of all of the money piled up inside, just say it's a bucket, right, inside a pot. They take 20 to 40%, they allocate it to bonds. Now, here's the cool thing. Your money is never, ever once invested directly in the market, but your money, portion of your money goes to bonds, right? The interest that those bonds earn on your money, the, the carrier scoops off the interest that your money's earning, they take that interest and they say, this is house money. I'm going to use this money to go ahead and earn a higher rate of return, a higher interest rate. And then I'm going to dump the profits back inside the general fund, back inside the policies, back inside the client's reserve, right? So they'll take that interest. They'll go ahead and invest in call options. Now, if you're an investor, you know what call options are. I don't claim to be an expert in that area, but you, you can follow me. I'm going to give you the very, very uh, third grade level understanding of what a call option is. A call option simply in its simplest form is if you see a bottle of water, right? You see a bottle of water that is $3.50 right now, and you know in the future, or you have a good hunch in the future that that bottle of water is going to sell for $6, $7, 8 9 $10. You're going to buy a call option now. Later on, when the value goes up, you're going to execute that call option. You're going to take a profit and you're going to come out on top in the green. Now, if that bottle of water goes the opposite direction and becomes less in value than you thought it would get, would, would be, it's just going to, the, the call option is going to expire. You're not going to lose anything. Your money's going to be protected. Then they'll just start the process all over again. Maybe they lost a little bit of interest, but they're not losing or gambling with your money. But in a, in a perfect scenario, let's say that call option executes and they make a profit on that. That profit, about 70 to 80% of that profit goes directly back into the reserve, goes back into the general fund of the life insurance carrier. Now, that's why they're able to give clients, you, 
They're able to give you guaranteed rates of return sometimes, and in certain types of products, they're able to guarantee a 0% floor so you never lose your money. So when you're placing money with the life insurance company, there's a couple things that's going on, a couple things that's going on right now. You're going to pay for the cost of insurance. That's kind of the scenario of allowing you to build tax-free wealth inside of a life insurance policy. The, the, the Rockefellers know this, the Rothschilds know this, Soros's know this, Warren Buffett's of the world all know this, okay? You're going to give a little to get a lot, okay? So when you place your money with a life insurance carrier, the IRS governs this and says, we'll let you play this game. We'll let you make money. We'll let you earn on a tax deferred, but really tax-free basis. We'll let you even use that money tax-free. We'll explain that in a minute. And then we'll let you transfer all of that money to your beneficiary, your heir, absolutely tax-free. So these wealthy families have been using life insurance as the foundation of their financial home for generations. And they know that any life insurance, whether it's a million dollars in coverage, $10 million in coverage or more, they know that when they die, when they expire, when they give up their, their ghost, that's what the Bible says, right? That that money is going to get transferred over into to their beneficiary or into their family trust, Okay, Rockefellers have a family trust. The Rothschilds have a family trust. The Vanderbilts had a family trust. They know that that money is going to get placed in that family trust and it's going to be tax free. There's a couple different IRS tax codes. Again, we'll do a whole nother video on what IRS tax codes cover life insurance and we'll break those down as well. So, that being said, guys, make sure you go ahead and if you're finding value in this video, make sure you go ahead and click that little Click that little subscribe button right there, I believe it is. Click the little bell that's next to it. Give it a little tickle. Just tickle the little bell so that it goes on so that every time I deliver valuable content like this, you're going to get notified. And you're going to be part of the what my kids call the notification gang. You've got to be, you've got to be part of the notification gang because I want this information to get out into the right hands. My goal, whether you work with me personally or not, my goal is to educate you and empower you to make the best decision possible with the information that you're learning. And I don't want you to stop at this video. I want you to continue to watch other videos, maybe of my channel, maybe of some other people's channels. But what I want you to do is get well-rounded. I want you to get well-educated so that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when you purchase a life insurance policy, you're doing the right thing for your family. And I don't want you to second guess it. So when I sit down with my clients, I'll sit down with an hour. I'll sit down for an hour, 45 minutes to an hour sometimes. And even if they don't end up working with me, I know in the long run, I did my job. I educated them and I got them to the place where at least they can make an educated decision with whomever they work with. So back to life insurance. Life insurance is never an investment. That cash value that you're building, two types of accounts we're, we use. We use a whole life policy, which gives you a low fixed rate of return. It's kind of like the grandfather of whole life of permanent policies. Whole life gives you a low guaranteed fixed rate of return. So there's some pluses, some pros and cons to it, right? The pros are it gives you a guarantee. So you, you'll earn minimum 2% interest, sometimes two to four. In, in different types of policies, depending on who you work with. Now, in a whole life policy, I don't want to get into the weeds too much with this. I want to continue with this. Uh, life insurance is not an investment uh, vehicle, but whole life gives you a low fixed rate of return. Sometimes you can even earn dividends. What are dividends? In its simplest form, dividends is just you overpaying for your premium and the carrier saying, oh, we didn't need this much at the end of the year and they go ahead and give you dividends back. It's like you overpaying the federal government and getting a tax refund back. A lot of people think that their tax refund is free money coming back to you. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, folks. Ma'am, sir, I'm sorry to burst your bubble. That tax refund that you just got of $5,000, $10,000, Guys, it's just you overpaying Uncle Sam, okay? And he's just giving you back what you rightfully deserve, okay? So our goal is to pay least taxes as possible. Matter of fact, when you file your tax return, your goal is to net zero, right? You don't want to owe, you don't want to get back. If you claim, if you have a zero 
While you file your tax returns, you've done something right. That means you're getting the most out of your paycheck and you're not giving any extra to your, uh, you know, to your uncle, your favorite uncle, that uncle Sam, that, that, that rascal him. So back to life insurance. When we're getting dividends, we're getting an overpayment of the premium. So that's whole life. The last uh, or the other type of life insurance that we use a lot, we do whole life, we do term, we do ROP, return of premium, but we also do something called indexed or equity indexed universal life insurance. Now that is a fairly new financial vehicle. It's been around for about 30 years or so, uh, late 70s, early 80s, a, a, uh, a group uh, called E.F. Hutton. Everybody knew who E.F. Hutton was. If you ask your parents, who's E.F. Hutton? Maybe they'll remember a uh, commercial. If E.F. Hutton said it, I'm going to listen or something, something along those lines. So E.F. Hutton came up with this idea. He said, I like the stock market, what I can earn in the stock market, but I don't like the risk. I do like the safety and security of life insurance. Let me go ahead and marry the two together. So he came up with this concept where you can put inside of a life insurance policy money and it would be pegged to the market. Never invested in the market, but it will be pegged to the market. So if the market goes up, you profit. But if the market goes down, you never lose because there's something built into this product called a 0% floor. Now that 0% floor resets and relocks at its highest high. When you earn 8% in your account, that 0% floor is gonna kick in at its highest high. When the market comes crashing down again, you're not gonna lose a single penny that you placed inside of that policy to protect, preserve, and grow at the same time. Now here's the thing. When that market picks up again, you're gonna start to earn interest again. The 0% floor is a, again, it's a fail safe. If the market crashes, at least during that temporary down period of the market, you may not get any interest. But at the end of the day, zero is hero. I want you guys to write that down. Zero is hero. I'd rather take 0% interest on my money any day of the week and twice on Sundays than allowing my money to decrease in value and go down and lose 30% lose 10%, lose 4%. I take that zero any day of the week because I know that my money's not going anywhere. Now, if you work with the right retirement strategist, the right insurance broker, we are trained to lower the death benefits, we decrease the death benefits to the legal minimum and allow the cash to accumulate as optimally as possible. That's something called minimum death benefit and maximum cash value. There's actually a strategy we use on our software when we design policies that allows us to minimize the death benefit to the legal minimum that still allows the contract to be considered life insurance because if there's not enough death benefits in there, the IRS will look at your policy and they'll say, that's an investment account. There's no difference between that and IRA. So that's why the life insurance company has to abide by these certain regulations and rules that the IRS sets forth. And they say, you have to have a little bit of death benefits attached to this policy in order for it to be considered death benefits or, or a life insurance policy. And then that's what allows it to grow tax-free for you to use it tax-free and for you to pass it over to your beneficiary tax-free. That being said, guys, I unleashed a fire hose on you in this video today. What I want you to get out of this video is that if you ever hear somebody talking about life insurance being an investment vehicle or that life insurance is not a good investment vehicle, I want you to understand one thing very clear. Life insurance was never meant to be an investment. It's a place for you first and foremost to protect your assets. Number one, your life. That's your biggest and most valuable asset. But number two, the money that you put in there. It's to protect, preserve, and grow your money with compound interest and certain policies allow you to do it based on indices that are in the stock market. So with that being said, guys, I appreciate you watching this video and sticking with me to the end. I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Remember to live well, laugh loud, and learn to be a better you. Make sure you go ahead and watch a couple of these videos that are popping up right here and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment down below. Let me know which questions you have and I'll be happy to answer them. Make sure you follow me on TikTok, Mark Cassara, Instagram, Real Mark Cassara, and of course on Facebook. I love you and I appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.